Oh, whoa. Don't die. Let's talk about a more nerdy side of architecture. Because besides designing, I like coming up with workflows and ways to improve them. There's other boring things that you have to do as an architect slash engineer, like writing emails, getting clients, making multiple revisions, breathing. One eternity later. And also gathering information when you're starting a project. Having a good digital twin is a good starting point. You can start by getting a 3D map model from CAD Mapper, but the buildings are not as detailed and the heights and topography isn't fully accurate. But for a conceptual model, it's fine. Later, you can get information from a land surveyor. If you're in the Netherlands, the landscape is flat as a board, so topography is easy. Other places with curvy landscapes. Just use a land surveyor. The gear you'll need for exterior photogrammetry is a drone. I use DJI, this is not sponsored. And you don't need more than the mini series for this method. But if you're going to be using apps with a subscription service like Drone Deploy, check which drone works with the app. For interior scans, you have phone apps like Polycam. That's a LiDAR scan, not photogrammetry, and only iPhones have a LiDAR sensor. The quality of Polycam is not that great anyway. There's professional scanning gear, both LiDAR or photogrammetry, but on a student budget, you're not buying that. In terms of money, we have no money. I just use a DJI Osmo Pocket for interior scans, so with a DJI Mini 2 Fly More Kit, you're looking at 700 euros invested for interior and exterior scan on a budget. I already figured out a method to scan the exterior of a building using a drone. Uh, that video is linked above in the cards in the description below. I also figured out uh, how to get a Google Maps mesh and convert it into a point cloud or just using it in a render program. The quality is not the best for the mesh, but I mean, if you're gonna be looking at it from afar, it doesn't really matter. But I didn't have a method to scan interiors. Until now. Yeah. So let's talk about interior photogrammetry on a budget. If you're on a student salary or as a last resort for firms. First things first, you need the student slash paid version of your particular 3D slash BIM program. So get the student version or buy it. There's no point in using this method if you draft in a 2D program. Bless your soul. Get the hell out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Okay. Get out! Get out! Ah. This method is just like the exterior one, but instead of doing a orbit around your subject, you'll need to firstly take multiple shots from the perimeter of the room. The way I found that works best is stand in a corner, take one picture parallel to the ground, one 45 degrees up and another one 45 degrees down. This is just a minimum at that particular point, but you can take more pictures on different angles going up and down. The more pictures you have, the better the photogrammetry scan. Then you walk around the perimeter every two meters do the same thing as you did in the first corner until you get to the other corner. You want to do this for all walls until you get back to your starting corner. After the perimeter is done, go stand in the center of the room and do the same but turn around a little for every parallel up down cycle and do a 360 turn on the spot and lastly go to a wall and take pictures of the wall like you're painting it with a roller. The camera being the roller. Sounds complex, it's just take a lot of pictures of the room. That's that's the basic. Just take a lot of pictures of the, that particular space. You want an overlap of about 70% or more between the pictures. So 70% of the thing you see on the first picture, you should probably see that on the second picture. And the picture needs to have a square aspect ratio and turn off depth of field. So yeah, I did about seven tests in Meshroom to create this workflow. The program is open source. Let's go through them from worst to best. 
Test number one. Yeah, I didn't save the file. That's pretty much it. That's why it's the worst. Some people are really fucking stupid. Test number seven. I told a person with no knowledge of the process and let them do it. They use an iPhone and just took pictures naturally. Here's where I found out about the square aspect ratio thing and to not take pictures with depth of field on, meaning things further in the background gets more blurrier. It makes your pictures look nicer, but horrible scan data for the program. Out of the 27 pictures, which is not a lot for photogrammetry, only two were usable by Meshroom. It was a horrible failure. Next, test number three. Instead of taking multiple pictures, I tried to cheat it by taking a video of the space and rendering it out in a JPEG sequence. This was also a horrible idea. I got around 11k pictures for a 6 minute video. Just for reference, an exterior scan manually done generates 1 to 2k pictures max. So I had about 11 times the data for a small room. You'll have to wait in the short eternity, uh, basically more than 24 hours. It might be infinite because I stopped it after 24 hours for a potential crash. It's not worth it. That's number four. The bare minimum amount of shots. This is where the process of starting in a corner, taking a picture parallel to the ground, 45 degrees up, 45 degrees down, etc. came from. I ended up taking 46 pictures in half of the space and uh, 38 pictures were usable for the program. That's number two and five. Do the correct method, but take more than the minimum at every spot. This gave me the best result. And test number six was basically combining the data sets after you finish letting the computer process one of them. Meaning I let test number two finish and then added the picture of test number five into the same file. So basically what I learned from this is you can always go back to the site and take more pictures to make the point cloud more detailed. Keep in mind some things might have changed so the program might do something weird. Here in this particular example, the code hanger, the clothes changed from day one to day two. So the program literally taught that the code hanger is literally outside of the space. So this is literally outside here. After that, you can toss the PL while file. So this is a point cloud file into cloud compare, another open source program, clean it up and align it to the XYZ axis because the program doesn't know what's up or down so it always gives you a room that's floating in space and then you can export it to a, a txt file for recap so you can bring it into revit or e52 file for archica bless your soul get the hell out get out get out get out get out get out the exterior drone scans take about one and a half to two hours of gathering data on site and eight to 12 hours of processing. You can start drafting the model while Meshroom makes the point cloud uh, in the background and then check it the next day to add more detail to the model. Interior scans can take about 15 to 45 minutes depending on the size of the room um, per room to gather data on site and four to eight hours of processing. You don't need to scan every room, just use a laser with an archive drawing or hand sketch plan of the space. Adam Savage of the Myth Busters had an awesome approach to taking measurements of a space. I like my method for making a quick and dirty architectural drawing. By quick and dirty, I mean a couple of hours for a space. So what I do is I draw out a map of the space that is not to scale and I don't worry too much about it being in scale. So long as the major players are there and here they are, camera room, makerspace, bathroom, printing farm, phone booth, uh, main space, right? So here's all the main details. And then I actually pulled out my phone and I figured out the compass direction. And this is the tested office. So what I do when I do a drawing like this is I draw out all the major parts and then I go into the middle 
I, I draw out what measurements I want, right? Like I want to know the dimensions of this room this way and this way. And I draw the arrow and I draw an open bubble. And I basically draw bubbles and arrows across the whole thing. And then, then I go around the space and fill in the actual dimensions. The really nice thing about the open bubbles is they are spaces that I can see are filled or not filled. And if they are not filled, that's still a measurement I need. It doesn't mean that I get all my measurements on the first pass because I don't. There's only so much you can like remember when doing something like this. But I, I get most of them and then I really get uh, where I need to go from here. So, bro. That's a dope way of going about it. Video above in the cards and below. Situations where I found that you should scan the interior is when you have something very detailed happening in the vertical direction, which is hard to measure, i.e. staircases or under staircases, detailed ceilings and vaults, or roof construction in the attics or floor construction, if the beams are in view. Just because I can scan doesn't mean I have to, you can be more efficient with your time. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope I gave you guys more of an insight in a more nerdy side of architecture and design instead of just drawing and fooling around because I actually do this in my own personal time for the fun of it because I, it makes my life easier. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like it. And thank you for watching. Till next time. Bro, this is another level up. Okay, cool. Next is combining drone shots with the handheld so I can scan ceilings like very high ceiling spaces with very high ceilings. Ah, I didn't call you. Anyway.